Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep Podcast Network, the Bucks podcast on the Eurostep Podcast Network, I should say, collab between the Win in Six podcast and the Eurostep podcast. I'm Ty Windish, one of your Eurostep hosts, joined as always with the, um, hmm, what adjective to use following some of our conversations on playback, pleasant co-host Rohan Kadi, as well as the Win in Six guys, Adam McGee and Jordan Tresky. Just realized that on the YouTube version <laughs> early on, we have uh, we have some uh, some real <laughs> costume changes to make here. But uh, while I do that, fellas, how's it going? Jordan looks and sounds kind of different than all the years that we've recorded together. Yeah, uh, I I look different too. You know? it's, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, Did Jordan not see it at first? No, like, I didn't. See Jordan, it. Jordan didn't see it. No. Uh, go, there go, we check, go. go check there the YouTube if you want to know what we're talking about yeah. here. Subscribe, by the way. Subscribe to everything, by the way. Subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. Subscribe to the Substack, gspn.substack.com. Subscribe to the YouTube. Leave a five star rating, not only on this feed, but on the cruising for yeah. a bruising feed. We're cruising. New baseball podcast, new Milwaukee Brewers podcast, co hosted by Adam McGee and Andrew Snyder. Go check it out if you haven't already. That's why I look like this. This is this is my <laughs> this is my personal brand now. This is what I'm, I'm gonna look like every time you see me, basically. Uh, so if you want me to eventually just kind of not be Bernie Brewer, subscribe, follow at, at that, Brewers or GSPN, or, or if you do want yeah. that, if hey, enough people further. want that, you gotta lean further into. Okay, it. if enough people want that, I'm open to it, but they're gonna have to subscribe or follow either way. It's good. Just give them no choice. Yeah. By the way, I mean, you're listening to this pod now, so listen to it. But there's, there's a Cruiser for Bruising episode waiting for you on the Brewers opener. And that's it. I'm done. I swear I'm done. I'm not going to I'm not gonna start talking about Aaron Ashby coming out of the game in the seventh inning. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. You're, you're getting the hook now. After, <laughs> after the Brewers game happened, the Milwaukee Bucks did take on the Boston Celtics in a game that was very important for seeding purposes. As as everyone knows, there's a log jam two to basically five yep. in the East right now. And uh, the Bucks and Celtics battle, no Jason Tatum, no Al Horford, no Robert Williams, obviously, because he's still dealing with uh, – he had surgery on a torn meniscus. So it was a game where it's like, you know, the Bucks should, Bucks should probably pull this one out. No Grayson Allen for the Bucks in this matchup. but uh, No Luca Valdoza. That's true. There's trying to figure out the logistics yeah. behind uh, whatever that means. That's that's what Bud said. They're trying to figure out the logistics to get him to play. I don't know what that means. He's already been signed. Who knows what that means? Does Bud know what it means? Did John Horace tell him to say logistics? Is he a UPS spokesperson now? <laughs> I Who knows? But uh, it was a close game. It was a very close game. The Milwaukee Bucks did end up with, they won, right? Yeah, 127. They did win. <laughs> what a start. I mean. <laughs> Someone else go. Adam's talking about baseball. Rohan's not talking about any any Milwaukee sports. Just tuned out of all of them. Just I, I can talk about basketball either. Yeah, that's that's true. Well, let's, Jordan, your thoughts on the game. You got to join us for playback. We were on playback for this game. We're going to be on playback for some playoff games. So if you're not already, get into the uh, the GSPN Discord. We had to have a lot of fun watching the game. But as Rohan said, he did watch the game. He just forgot who won. Um, closer game than it probably should have been with all the guys out for Boston and how healthy the Bucks were. But I don't know. I was never really that concerned about uh, – not the game itself, but I think I'm just – it's game 80. I'm just past the point of taking big concerns about the Bucks. As long as everyone is, like, healthy and no one got hurt, that's the real win at this point. So, uh, Jordan, what were your thoughts on kind of the, you know, closer than it had to be, but still a win game? My thoughts exactly. We are game 80 of a very long season. And it's not just this season. It's everything. They're all long? So. They're all long, but it's it's the culmination or accumulation of the COVID year, then the post-COVID year. We're not post-COVID, but you know what I mean? Like last year. And then the Bucks played their own season to win the title last year. And then it's like, okay, there's a new season, but it's too (laughs) soon from this season. It's just a lot. There's been a lot of basketball. Plus Olympics. Plus Olympics. Yes. We're forgetting the the Olympics. Um, I don't know why my voice got that high. (laughs) Um, It was just a lot. 
and it, it had that very late regular season vibe. I know that again, it was very important for seeding purposes and all that stuff, but watching the game until maybe the last 10 minutes, that 7 0 run from the Celtics at the start of the fourth, it just kind of had a very like, okay, we're not. We're not. We're taking it maybe seventy percent to eighty percent, and then it's like turn it on kind of thing. Let's really kind of get into it. Um, and the products prevailed. I mean, at this point, it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know. I'm weirdly confident about this team, regardless of any scenario that they face. I understand the Nets are this boogeyman that kind of lurk at every corner, but like, books beat them last week. Beat them last week. They're not the same team. They literally waived James Johnson for a two-way guy today that was playing more for them, but it's still like, okay, like that kind of impacts where you are. And your- Rohan thinks that this ruins their team. It does. It does. James Johnson James Johnson was a linchpin. It's just he's so That so is, good. I mean, in a, so in a specific Yana or Bucks uh, lens, that is their Giannis defender. Him. Yeah, I mean, what, can we talk? We don't want to get two nets, but. Why didn't they believe you? You got on me for going Brewers, and we're going James Johnson. Well, I mean, there's a potentially a playoff series looming at least. But why didn't they wave Blake? He doesn't play. I don't know. Like, there's no cost not... difference. Does Blake have another year? Maybe he's like no. he cracks jokes in the locker room. It's purely based on salad, right? it would purely be based on luxury tax, right? But what does it matter? They owe the guys the money anyway. Same. That's they're true. still paying Blake. Yeah, that's bizarre. It's a it's weird a very decision. Weird. weird. I mean, hey, they gave the Bucks Javon Carter too, who actually did play a little bit in this game, probably because uh, Grayson Allen did not. Javon logged a few minutes, but I mean, some real fourth quarter minutes, which, as we're talking about, the game was closer than it seemed. Kind of a, a funny stat to illustrate, like trusting the Bucks and everything. They win the fourth quarter, and they obviously end up winning the game. They only win it by one, but they hold on and win. Giannis one for five in the fourth quarter. Chris zero for two. And they still hang on and win. Drew Holiday, Drew, another yeah. just takeover, man. Four for six from the field, made a three, two assists, two steals, two rebounds, all in the fourth quarter. I mean, he continues to just be ridiculously impressive with how he can take over games, the impact he has on both ends. And it was a good Bobby Portis game. He was two for two in the fourth as well. But, yeah, I, I agree with you, though, Jordan. It is just We're at the point now with the Bucks where – and it's funny because it was kind of the opposite right around the break. They lost the stinkers to Philly and Brooklyn. And it was kind of the opposite of like, oh, they should have this game. And then they don't. But these last couple of weeks, and uh, last, I think last thing we'll plug for a while, hopefully. Eugene wrote a really good article about this on the GSPN Substack. Like, you just trust them. They're, they're battle-tested. They just they come through in close games. And a lot of it has stemmed from Giannis. That was one of his big points. But, I mean, Giannis, I mean, you know, it wasn't like he was terrible or, or anything. He had a good Giannis game. But it wasn't like, oh, Giannis took over and now everyone else fell in line. Actually, no, it's kind of cool that, like, you know what? Tonight, Drew and Bobby will take over, and that'll be enough. Like, I think that's what sets the Bucks apart as title contenders is there's so many guys on this roster who you just innately trust to be like, oh, yeah, that guy will carry us if need be for sure. If Chris wants to take – and he earned this in the Brooklyn series when he had those terrible games but pulled out just enough. Chris wants to take over and take three step backs in the fourth quarter. Go right ahead, man. Like, we're just going to ride with it. And it seems like the whole team is so on board with that. And that's what I think is going to make them so hard to beat again in the playoffs. I, I think, too, it's and it's like the ultimate luxury. And it's one of these real signs of how far we've come in talking about the books. It's like last week was last week was it for the regular season. Last week was it. It seals yeah. the deal. And they beat the Nets. They beat the Sixers. And was it always pretty? No, but. That's what we're becoming used to. It's just, oh, it doesn't matter. They'll just win. Like, it's just whatever kind of game it is, they're going to win. So you get to a game like tonight, and I'll whisper it, but you know, it's a little boring. You know, if you're to treat it as a game, it's it's a little boring. We don't really care. So some of us might be more scared than others, but we don't really care about the whole seeding. Like, it's just the books go out there, play their games, and win. We're two games away now. Someone needs to take the YouTube controls off tight. <laughs> um, <laughs> I realized my power after I had to make the move. You're shrunk. You're like this is, this is a radical, radical like... moment for the podcast. <laughs> this is. <laughs> uh, um, it's very distracting, too. All right. But sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, it really, it's like, it's about the playoffs at this point. 
and it's there's there's nothing outside of that we've been here and it's the kind of it's the kind of sentiment we'd have shared at the start of the season and certainly last year that's what we talked about was nothing matters for this team until they get to the playoffs because we've seen everything else before like we have literally seen all, everything now they've won the championship so i think overall like we're at a point we could talk at the regular season i think it's been a good regular season i i think there would be some who would disagree with that and it's oh no they shouldn't have as many losses or should the defense hasn't been as good i think all things considered the grueling as jordan laid out the grueling nature of the last few years and particularly for the books and the kind of the emotional ups and downs coming into a new season the nba not ending after you win a championship and having to actually go again to try and win another like i i think they've done well they're in a very good spot they're certainly trending as we've been saying for a while they're trending upward and upward when it matters and i mean brooke is a great example <laughs> tonight comes in he has moments where he's just dominating offensively and as you talk about there's there's always another guy to step up for the books that now feels more true than it's been at any other time in the season like kind of double digit scores are not in short supply like grayson allen's another guy who could do that he wasn't there tonight and yet you've still got five players uh, with 15 plus points like that's not a position that most of these teams the books are going to face have and then at the top end you've got players who can really really score drew and the way he's finishing games is a big deal none of this is new so part of that you're right we were on playback and i think more than any other playback i've been on we we talked about a lot of things that weren't specifically what was happening on screen some could say that's down to Jordan Tresky being in the mix. Uh, but I, I also Jordan think rules. it's I think it's game <laughs> 79 of 80. Yeah. Game 80. Sorry, you're right. Um, it's late. It's early. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Game 80 and we know what they're like. And it's like, are they going to beat the Celtics? Sure. <laughs> I, I <think laughs> will it look too. like they won't beat them? Probably, but they will. And that's the kind of groove we've fallen into. Now, that's a dangerous spot, and I don't think anyone's going to feel like that once the playoffs start. So that's something for the books that they've got to be kind of extra gear and a lot of the sloppiness. Like maybe Chris should try not spilling every rebound he tries to grab when game one of the playoffs comes around. But at this point in time, it's like we know what they can do. They know what they can do. And to their credit, one way or another, they are delivering on it most nights. Just quickly uh, on that note, I think part of the reason maybe the game was a little more sloppy and the Bucks and also us on playback, as soon as like Tatum and, and Horford get ruled out, this coming into this game, it did look like even knowing Time Lord wouldn't play. This was, I thought, I think we kind of identified, that's why we did the playback, the last real tune-up opportunity. Because after this second game of back-to-back, it doesn't even matter who it is. We know they're not going to send the guys... They didn't for the Clippers, who are actually pretty good. Um, They didn't play anyone either in that game. But Detroit tomorrow, no one's going to play. The Cavs, I'm guessing it'll be like 15 to 20 minutes for the guys who do play, the starters, and then probably a lot of, you know, Luca Vildoza if they figure out logistics. But when Tatum and Horford get ruled out, then I think all of us is kind of like, okay, like we're going to watch the game. It'll be fun. Hopefully they win. But it's not, we're not going to learn that much more or really any more, right? Like it's just going to be, Another ge- a good good team. They're still a good team without those guys, but it's not like the Nets game or the Sixers game where it's like we get to really see how they match up against tier one competition. It kind of lost that edge. So I think that has a little bit to do as well with the just kind of, oh, okay, like you said, oh, we'll go beat the Celtics. It goes from a conference semifinals preview, potential preview, to just being game 80. And as great as the Celtics have been, I mean, I think I saw a stat today that are like point differential over the the some uh, number. It rivals like the greatest teams that have played in NBA history. <laughs> so it's like they are a very still. I mean, we saw tonight they are still a very good team. They have depth. They have quality players up top. I mean, they've hit a gear that few saw coming in a way that is kind of unheard of mid mid season too. Um, but yeah, it kind of lost a little bit of its steam when you don't have Tatum, when you don't have Horford, Time Lord, obviously out too. So yeah. 
It's it's also not like you're going to have to worry about game planning in the playoffs for Sam Hauser going three or four from deep, <laughs> four or five from the field. Like Peyton Pritchard's taking 10 shots. Marcus Smart is shooting 12 threes in a game. You like, might what, see that in the playoffs. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah I was going to say that might be. We might, that might be on the low end for him in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's just – like you said, Ty, there's not much you can take from this. And it seemed like that sort of trickled down to the Bucks. You, what are we supposed to do? It's like an exercise of what on earth is supposed to happen here? What is the goal of this game here? Sure, you're getting reps, but also you're not learning anything. I think that's a good way to put it. You're not learning anything. So we saw that sort of take place until, until the game got close. That's when the big three started to take over. That's what's most important. That's my big takeaway from this game. I have one other I want to talk about, but Jordan, do you have that that cool big three stat up still? Oh yeah, that uh, stat muse, courtesy of stat muse. When, A real stat uh, from stat muse. Maybe more of those. Wow. We get, we get more pod <laughs> Maybe, You know, um, what is it? Nine and zero when the big three scores twenty or more. No, the, big with the history one. Oh yeah, yeah. I, here, let me bring so that. many big three stats. Yeah, I, I got, I got it, I got it. The Bucks trio of Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, and Giannis Antetokounmpo are the first to have 20-plus points, 8-plus rebounds, 5-plus assists, and 2-plus steals in an NBA game since steals have been officially tracked in 1973. Pretty wild. There's been a lot of great trios who have played together. Also, you pronounce yeah. Giannis's last name wrong. It's uh, Antetokounmpo. <laughs> I said a Kumbo. Yeah, Kumbo? It's, the, it's the W. It's, you the need W. To, you yeah. forgot the W. Oh, That's yeah. The, yeah. All this time, we've style. all been pronouncing it wrong. Stan Van Gundy's. He's all over. Yeah. It's the W we've all been missing. What happened? Silent W. Did he just that decide? That isn't silent like, when he says it. Did he just decide to like learn a different pronunciation? He was like, no, I'm going to actually get this. And then no one corrected him? Like, did he workshop that? I mean, there's been a lot of announcers who have yet to be corrected. He's so that caught a lot of his play. games, too. I know. Yeah. This I, is new. I wonder, I wonder, is he, and this is something, like, I think, um, open to correction, and I apologize to Mr. Jeff Van Gundy if I'm wrong. But I think, for example, Jeff mostly uses just Giannis. Like I, I, there's a lot of there's a lot of sidestepping that goes on yeah. in the broadcast of game to avoid that. So on the one hand, I say kudos to Sam yeah, Mangundi for not for being afraid and being like, oh, I'm gonna say his his surname just like anyone else. But if you're gonna do that, maybe make sure you've got it right. And, and I don't know how. I don't know how Stan Van Gundy of all people doesn't have it right at this point. It's just. Maybe my favorite part of the game, also the most infuriating moment, but certainly the thing I will remember from this Celtics game is Antetokounmpo. I think out of of national people, obviously not counting Bucks broadcasters, I think Kevin Harlan gets it the best. Or Spiro Adidas. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think Harlan's had some legendary. Breen's pretty good. I mean, Spiro, like... It's, yeah, Spiro's Greek, Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's got an advantage on that one. Um, but I, it's there's a certain level of pro that's in it. And look, the, Stan Van Gundy is... Now I just want to hear, he, like, a super He's a coach. coach. <laughs> and someone might get that, you know? That's... Like I, I, I would say there could be a Super Bowl. <laughs> I want to hear Hubie say it. Let's just get, like... Hubie, these... Hubie is a Giannis. He's just yeah. a Giannis guy. Let me tell you. Yeah, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Number number thirty four. <laughs> yes. They got back when I was watching Sam. Back when I was watching, when I was watch watching Sam Jones. <laughs> watch the spin when he spins around. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, B. He's Huey's the best. He's he is eighty eight. He's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Like I know sure Vin Scully when he, you know, said he, it was done. I, I don't know why I could not say he's done being an announcer. <laughs> Hubie Brown's like on the road. Yeah. Hubie's grinding, man. You see Jeff Van Gundy said Hubie Brown should he's, be the one that uh, has, like, he's the one vote for all NBA awards. Could you imagine that's putting that, that I'm on Hubie Brown? I, you and I would. He's like I, I trust him more than other people, like, and he yeah. puts in the work. It's just he's too just, much, though. Not, not to bring it back to baseball, I'm not doing it, but he's the same age as a legendary Milwaukee broadcaster, it's all I'm saying. Gotta win one. Brian Anderson? Win. Wow. That's that's tough. Um I did want to talk about one other actual Yuka was on the road today as well. Anyway, continue. He's uh he's uh 
Uke rules. Um, he does. I'll never forget a call I heard on the radio in the car with my dad. He said, uh, just a little high, just like me sometimes. And I was like, wow, what a legend. <laughs> um, absolute legend. Adam, this is something that you brought up. Uker is like Rohan's tweets late at night. Hey, right? listen, re- relax, 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 <laughs> relax, relax. Brooke Lopez uh, does not play much in the second half. Logs 23 mm-hmm. minutes overall. And we don't think, or at least I don't think we think, that this is a conditioning thing. Because we've seen him play big minutes in some other games. And... It was like just the second half. He logs less than eight second half minutes after 15 or whatever first half minutes. Seemed like a matchup um, decision. And, I mean, you know, to give some context, he was a minus 12 in those eight second half minutes. So I was just going saying, great with him on the floor. Plus minus has not been good lately. But, it like, it's, it's one of those where it, it hasn't really felt like that. Does does anyone disagree with me on that? I mean, there's there are some obvious runs. There was one tonight, but Brooke, particularly offensively, is getting so much joy on the floor recently. But against the Mavs it was similar. Second half, you don't see him. Um, I it's it's a recurring theme that Bud is going smaller second half. I don't know why. I I don't entirely get it, particularly with some of the combinations. But he's doing it in kind of a a pretty rigid and repetitive way, almost similar to oh, it's West Matthews time to start. So it might be reaching a point where we should be like, yeah, well, maybe we should be paying some more attention to this. This is who we are, kind of thing. Is that what you mean? It, well, it's just a shape. It's certainly something that they want to look at very closely. Yeah. I mean, to their to <laughs> we haven't seen a lot of the full complement of players so it's like they you know it's now or never kind of thing where they can actually be hey we're gonna have a nine-man rotation tonight we're gonna have brooke depending on how you know the game state is is brooke gonna see seven and a half minutes four quarter minutes yeah i I am sure there's also a level of maintenance still going on not that he's on a minutes restriction but it's like yeah okay brooke has scored 15 points tonight yeah, we're good with that. You know, he's yeah. he's looking good. He looks ready. We don't need to do that. But I, I think some yeah. of it is offense. I, I it feels like they're still trying to refigure out. Not his offense has been really good lately, but I think they're trying to refigure out. And maybe they should play it more if they're doing this. But like, how does Giannis function with Brook out there better, and and vice versa? Which has always kind of been difficult at times um, because. As much as great as it would have been if Brook just you know was a thirty six plus three point shooter every year with the Bucks, like it kind of seemed like he would be year one. It really hasn't happened, and I think they've gotten their offense a little bit gummed up, and especially some of these possessions where Brook gets it in the mid range area and he's like pump fakes, not going to shoot. Javon Carter in the corner clapping like, "Hey, I'm I'm open, shooting ninety four percent on threes with the Bucks." Brook's like, "No, nah, I'm going to take the one legged fade away, whatever shot." Um, so I, I think the I think it's offense more than defense. I will say he has not played much since the Sixers game. He did play nearly thirty minutes against the Bulls, and he dominated Vucevic in that one. So I do think it's it's a little bit, at least a little bit matchup, not entirely um, tune up um, um, decisions. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I certainly don't want them to go away from him too quickly in the playoffs because he's just really good. This is what we kept coming back to last postseason. Um, but I do think, you know, they need to figure out some of these things offensively because they've just had some really tough runs where, like, the spacing isn't good, the ball movement isn't crisp. And, and again, if, if you're trying to relearn it, maybe you'd want to play him more. But I don't know. Maybe they're also they're trying to balance that with winning games or I don't know. I don't really have any my, answers. My, my one thing on that, though, which we all know and Bud and the book certainly know, there's a possibility that series are going to come where you can't play Bobby. And right now they're not looking at options that are, I think true. Like do they Bobby was on the floor. Though? Sorry. Do they have an option for when it gets a little dicey with Bobby? I mean, maybe not. Cause Serge Ibaka might not be He's... alive, but I'm, yeah. I'm not even talking about that, but that's where you go small. And it's like, Chris plays the four and you've, I don't know, pot in at the tree or whatever way you want to do it. You could go two guards, although George Hill's injury status would probably change the thinking on that. Um, 
I, I, I'm surprised though in doing that that there's not some more looks maybe at those kind of lineups because it does feel like if you're moving away from Brook in certain lineups, they're very different players, but they're not all. They're also not going to be matchups that are ideal for Bobby. And if Bobby all of a sudden ends up as your big on the floor, that's that's going to cause some problems. Or it's going to leave you vulnerable. Now we know he'll compete. We know the game, and we saw last year. It's going to vary from series to series and team to team on how he can be hunted on that. But I, I I do think if you're kind of, if that is part of their thought process, I'm surprised we're not seeing some looks that are more like, okay, well, you know, even, I mean, that's just, they're starting Wes a whole lot now. So do we see some lineups that have Wes and Grayson? I don't know. It's, uh, you, maybe, you, I... move, you move Chris up a spot. I, I, I don't know. I'm just, that's that's the kind of the one thing I have on that. I'm maybe this is being completely over top, but it does seem like something that is a recurring team, much like Wes is. And I honestly, if you think about Wes, I would not be surprised at all, particularly in the first round, depending on the opponent. Obviously, the first round could be a really stern test, or it could still be something that the books be really confident. Like we could watch West play the last X number of games, and we could get the game on the playoffs, and but could be like, oh no, Grayson's starting. But I he's would looking actually, at. I would be shocked. Well, I think he's looking at West because he wants to know that's there for certain matchups. But there's a possibility with some opponents where he's like, "No, you know what? That's not the best approach here." Like we're still. I I know. I think you and I generally disagree on this. I yeah. I I definitely feel like Grayson offers more offensively than you do. Just just yeah. his presence out there. I, I think you can leverage that more. I know, I know, Wes is zippy and all he's that. Very zippy. But call, it, call him jeans. He's he's a zipper. That's Ooh. that's again uh, when it's not game eighty against the Celtics. How is Wes gonna look in a series where the attention is like fully locked in him because he's the weak spot on the floor on an offensive possession? I think that means it won't be locked in on him. The problem with Grayson is it's just too theoretical for me, and I think the Bucks have realized this too. Of like, theoretically, he brings a lot of offense, and all it's of not even best... theoretical though. It's I don't happened. think it's theoretical. It he's just theoretical when he's out there with the big three. Is the point that, that I'm making because they just don't use him, and I just don't think. He's... Yeah, but that's tied to usage, and that's well, that's how you should be operating. But he's a greater threat than than Wes Matthews. I just don't think it functionally makes enough of a when difference. When the when the ball the it game. it does because when the ball gets to him, he can do more. When the ball gets to Wes Matthews, all he's doing is shooting. Yeah, I mean, and, I, again, it's but it's and it, that's it, not it, it it's not good. Is it it's one not, possession a game? It's not going to be more than one because we've seen in these games where Wes has been starting, they are defenses are ignoring Wes Matthews. They yeah. do not care. They ignore you can't Grayson ignore, too. and that uh, you're going to have a you. They, they're not ignoring Grayson as much as they do Wes Matthews. I think the Bucks are maybe ignoring Grayson more than Wes Matthews. That's not. I think. What, I think in a point, I'm trying to make. But I, I think in a play. About. But I think in a playoff series, if that was the case, you're going to pivot very quickly if you're the books to Grayson. If Grayson makes a couple of shots, he is going to force an opposing defense to adjust, or he will kill them over and over. I really don't have faith that Wes will do that. Now, to our larger points, like how much does the Grayson or West thing matter? I don't know. I still personally look at that. It matters. It, but it's it's series dependent, which is where. I, I, I do. Know. I do think the calls will be made. I like. I don't think that has to be. This is Wes's spot now. Like, when? When? When did he? So the the lineup change was made permanent at well, not permanent, but it happened for the Nets game, correct? Last week. Yes. Sixers. 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 Yeah. It was Sixers. before. Yeah, it was the first game. Stuff like that. I mean, again, granted, we've seen how the team's health has been this year and all that stuff, and. That's obviously a big, you know, part of this context. But stuff, Bud doesn't do that for. He largely doesn't do that to kind of you know do match-ups. it for the sake. Yeah, ma- yeah. matchups are. I agree. No, I I don't think he's doing it for the sake of it. But I I do think this is a very obvious time for them to experiment with some things that they may be thinking about because. A week ago, if you look at the schedule, you've got three teams that you could face in the playoffs, three of your main threats. So, for example, it could be as simple. Like, I'm I'm not saying I don't expect Wes 
I just I don't think it's a guarantee. I think there is there is room for flexibility on that. I I don't think it's a case of lock it in. It's there, but it's clearly an option they want to have because we all know what this is going back to. It's going back to one of my least favorite talking points from before the season, which is PJ Tucker is gone. What is the books version of a like a lineup with that? Which which they don't have, but Wes is their closest approximation to give them Wrong. some version. It's the masses. Well. Sure. But uh, I don't think it's a PJ. I agree with you that they shouldn't be looking through a PJ Tucker thing. I think it's twisting it to they want a more experienced. But it's an experienced player. defender with some size and strength. Is So that that's what I'm saying. And it's PJ Tucker. That's what I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, but I'm saying. But if you're going to possibly play the Nets in the first round to if the Celtics prevail over whoever they face. You're, I mean, Wes is going to feature greatly in both those series, and that's one and two out of the gate. For sure. You know what I mean, so like that's where I, I do think this. I don't think it's again. I'm not going to say this is what's going to be for, you know, April seventh to, hopefully the mid June when they hoist up Larry Ob again. <laughs> um, but like, I do think this is. I don't think it's an accident. I do think there, this is a long look. And I mean, the results kind of show so far that it has been working. I, I, and I don't think it's trying to fit a Wes Matthews shaped peg into a PJ Tucker shaped hole. What do they say when they break huddles? One, two, three defense. Like, for sure. But that's, it's, they're looking for all, all I'm saying with that is they're looking for a type and I'm not saying they shouldn't be. They're looking for a type. They're looking for a lineup option, yeah. but uh, that's to me, that's what I feel like. Now it doesn't, Bud being Bud, there is a good chance that he just chooses the lineup option that is more defensive minded to go throughout the playoffs. That's possible. But let's look at the, the play in picture right now. And I mean, the books are second, look like they could be second. Okay, there's a good chance the books going to up at the Nets. We all know that's a West Matthews series. Like, we all know. Possibly for better, for worse, because you may end up in some games that where you need an extra jolt of offense. But that's the way it's Matthew series. If they play the Cavs, Hawks, or Hornets, are you are you benefiting? Is it is it doing something in having Wes out there? I like so. is I don't I think you can go with Grayson, and I don't I don't think it hurts you because the the other side of this is. When the books get to some of those really big series, they're gonna need Grayson to make some big shots because that's what it's gonna come down to. And like, I don't. Do you agree with this, or do you disagree with that completely? If big shots are falling the way of a role player, doesn't matter if it's start or a bench. I, I have more confidence in Grayson than the West matches. Yeah, I suppose, but I have more confidence in Pat anyway in that situation, and I, I just. Well, this is kind of like it hits on the thing of like it's why I kind of view Grace as like the highest variance of yeah he could play five minutes over average five minutes of the playoff series or depending on the matchup he could play like as much as twenty five and you know reclaim his spot in the starting lineup like that's where he kind of falls in this weird uh, role now be- just because it it came out of, well not it didn't come out of nowhere but. It was just kind of shocking to see this kind of card be pulled, you know, with what a handful of games left for yeah. the end of the regular season. And you're just kind of seeing like, okay, the the shape of the rotation is going to change completely to how you see fit and how does Grayson fit into a picture that was kind of starting to come together and now you're kind of like juggling all the puzzle pieces again to see how they fit again. So that's where it's – especially a guy that, you know, this is his first time, first year – in Milwaukee and clearly has benefits and advantages to playing him over some other options. But, you know, this is the real test now. The It's not, you know, just this is the final grade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's also, there's also Pat is the guy we know who has Bud's trust and just seems to earn it more and more. And the more the rotation shrinks, like the more likely Pat's going to be one of the last men standing. So oh, definitely. that, that turns out then, like where that goes to is okay. Well, can you get one of or both of Bobby and Brooke to be playable in a series? If the answer is yes, then you're playing bigger than Pat 
can can maybe take up more of those minutes than either of those guys, whether he starts or not. Yeah, like yeah, and that. and that 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 could well be the way it plays out. Well, because he's the two way option. I think that's it makes sense. Even if he's if he's worse offensively than Grayson and worse defensively than Wes. Yeah, you're you're able playing able offense defense with the yeah, other two guys. Yeah, yeah. Just, I I, I agree with that defense. completely. I, that that ties into some of my concerns with Wes. Um, I, I can see where where it nets out, but no pun intended in a net series like if they got their offense firing if KD and Kyrie are really going off the Bucks may find themselves having to make up some ground and if you don't want it to be great then maybe maybe we can agree on Pat I just think there are better options the Bucks could go to and I, I think it's it's a balancing act and honestly the George Hill news and his injury does add something else into the mix here because will George still play 100%? He has not had the surgery and Bud clearly has a, a real trust in George Hill day and they go back a long way. And I, I don't think that trust is misguided either, but honestly, the severity of that injury explains quite a bit of what we've been seeing recently. And I don't I know how advisable. Well, he did. He didn't did he have it all year. I don't I know if it was all year, but it kind yeah. of explains some length of time. Obviously, I mean he he goes from playing to not playing for how long? A month? Yeah, it was over a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was over is, a month. yeah. So I mean We were also, I mean, with the quotes that came out horse and bud, like the books kind of BS us on that again. On the injury stuff. No, Neck soreness. With, Neck with the soreness. stuff like just before All Star. But it, it is a very prognosis, like, situation like, where it's like it's on the player to elect if they want to have the surgery. And that surgery would have wiped them out for the season. Yeah. And it sounds like it sounds like, you know, maybe even for long term, George Hill possibly should have. But he's what, 36, soon to be 37. So I'm not surprised he didn't because. It's going to be it, particularly for playing like this, too, because you can't say to people after you had the surgery and you're 38. No, no, it was just my neck. It's like, yeah, you're 38 now. So yeah. your, your time is being gone. Like I, it, it, this comes back to, I guess, the real positives, regardless. Are, the books have options like we can discuss yes. these options in a way we could not discuss last year. They have the ability but, to go offense, defense. Yeah. Yes. Or or to be somewhere in between and play Pat or. You know that's that's Von a different Carter. spot to be in, but I I, I do Wiggington. think. Well, uh, do you remember? Do you remember the wave? Remember the wave of Linda Wiggins' life that you two were on? I it was interesting. It wasn't that much of a wave? I don't think it was interesting. It was more. I think we should, in I think we should check the tape. I think it was I saw more some Javon people Carter on their slander. surfboards. <laughs> say people in this Zoom chat. <laughs> he had a full no, eight-minute run. I, I think punch Bobby. This is Chester. this is what Luca's here for. There, Boy. there is more. There is more potential <laughs> for frequent and dare I say random bud lineup surprises in the Did playoffs. Someone say play random, and that is that is for better or worse because the options are gonna they're gonna give them the ability to adjust that adjust the way. Oh man, deep. All of a sudden, work. you'll be like, why is Robin Lopez not playing in the playoffs? That's the other that's thing on West, though. Yeah, that right it's now. very Rolo. Yeah, that's like. literally the case for some reason. But yeah. what's when we think of West and we think of obviously his last playoffs with the books? The great not. mistake. <laughs> well, was it? Uh, will yes. he feel differently this time? It was overplayed at the time, honestly. But you oh, know what? Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was over. Not, they bring, they won the championship up? the next year, so we don't need to. I think you're going to break the Spolstra thing. I was gonna say when Rowan said twelve deep, it's like, well, what? We'll just be like the Heat then. I mean, they're the number one seed. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be like the Heat? They've got culture. They've got the number one seed, and they I've play got twelve a deep. Pat What's Riley, that? he's yeah. he's portrayed by Adrian Brody on TV at the moment. Who wouldn't want to be the Heat? I love how Ty just got aired. <laughs> I get aired. There was a, there was a pause. Well, yeah, you guys just, I don't know. Like, is that what being aired means? I didn't think that was being aired. <laughs> oh, I guess I got aired. We take it offline? I guess, yeah. Let's take it outside. You should shrink Rohan, play. That's insane. I'm thinking about it. 
I'm just I'm just saying what's I'm just the real honey. I shrunk the kids yeah. situation got Call on. Me Moranis. Call me Jim Paschke. I'm just doing play by play. That's disrespectful to You're, Jim Paschke. One of your yeah, I don't think I don't think Jim Paschke is gonna call the call the year tonight. <laughs> We're more city McCreef color commentary tonight. Yes. That's Dunk shot. <laughs> That's a throwback. You know, Wes Matthews oh. only had one real bad month offensively. Define bad. What's the, what's the good? No, I'd rather define the good month. Well, I'm not being like glib about that. Three out of five, he was 35% or higher from three. Two of them, 40% or higher. 35.7 one month, 32 one month. And then February was the bad one. Seventeen. On what volume? Yeah. So, but that's um, three, a, so you're per game pretty consistently. So your issue with Grayson is the volume. So is that just that Wes is going to get similar volume because that's the kind of player he is? So you'd rather have the the upside in defense. Is yeah, that pretty your... much. Yeah, I just I, I just think the way that they utilize both starting twos over the year, they they're not getting enough out of Grayson when he's a starter. And then the other end is clearly Grayson's averaging six three point attempts a game. I mean, I, that's fine. I just do you, do you also I'm don't watching the games. I just don't think that the impact is the same when they're both out there with the starters. Do you not think in a playoff setting though, too, if you've Grayson out there with Drew and Giannis and Chris and the attention that those guys are going to draw, there is the potential for Grayson to get even better looks and more looks than he gets in a regular season setting where there isn't really the overreaction, the overcorrection either way. It's not. It's not game eight against the Boston Celtics. All of a sudden, if you're playing the Boston Celtics in a seven game series in the conference semifinals, it's like that's where you've got a choice. And it's like Giannis or Grayson. Like you're going to choose to go on Giannis, but Grayson can punish teams in that situation. I, I, I could be completely misguided. I just, I have a feeling that Grayson could be really important for this team. I do think it's, it's an interesting timing to go this way. It doesn't make it wrong. But there is a balancing act to that, too, in terms of what his role becomes. And I don't think you're wrong on his usage, but it's then, OK, can can coming off the bench, can you find a way that he's just a little bit more featured, depending on who's off the floor? If I that's think that's the case. what they're doing. I think that's the other side of this. It's but that's, that's also not really going to happen in the playoffs, though, because it's going to be you're going to have one of the big three or two of the big three on the court at all times. Yeah, but that's still that's I mean less than three, and I think we're I, I think there's a pretty strong correlation with how much he's featured, and it seems like Chris especially. Like I think if they bring Chris and Giannis maybe even out and have Grayson with Drew in some lineups, I think that could work really well. I feel like Grayson's. I best pr- I prefer matching season. Grayson with Giannis. Well, yeah, I, I think Grayson when when Chris is out of the game though, I think that's a really. Like a lot of the shots that are going to go to Chris otherwise, and even the kind of catch and shoot well, that's, shots. You look at the his best run of the year was when Chris was out. That was when Grayson. We were like, "Oh my God, Grayson Allen is going to. Hey, this is the best contract in the league. He averaged like eighteen points a game for like two weeks. Like it was crazy. And then Chris came back, and the use that Chris is in all those spots. So I just think bringing him off the bench, getting him with more of the bench players who don't use the ball as much. I just think that I think that's also better. It's not just they're better with Wes as a starter. I think they're all Grayson is better coming off the bench a little bit and playing less with with the big three. And again, I mean we're talking all about the offensive end because there's just really not a case on the other end for for Grayson. And I think got that some stats. We got I'm stats. Back you up here. Ooh. Uh, like that. Starting lineup since Wesley Matthews has been inserted into the lineup. Thirty-seven minutes minus nineteen point eight net rating. Obviously, it depends on the games and stuff like that, but. So there you go. But to Ty's it, point, Grayson's hip injury is not ideal. So for the timing of this experiment, to really yeah, because it's out been very how he's gonna look. He's, and he's been a... in and out for a little while, which is also possibly yeah. another reason why, like favoring Wes. If you don't know if Grayson's gonna be one hundred percent in the playoffs, could he miss games here or there? Yeah, like on that in that regard, having a different starting lineup kind of bedded in could be something that's that's a real positive. But what's to the Ty's point though about less minutes? For Grayson kind of equals better result. Um, he has the highest on court net rating over the last five games, plus 11.8 in 76 minutes. The off court rating is ne- negative 9.5, so that's like 21.3 points per possessions. Again, yeah, small sample size, so do not say like this is definitive. When Grayson plays less, <laughs> the Bucks are better, but yeah, it does kind of it is interesting to see that kind of. Volatility in such a you know 
again, very small sample. The, the other things that we're talking rotation, like and jokes about 12 man rotations aside, we're seeing Bud cut the rotation back a little bit and then maybe loosen it up a little bit more tonight. Not what do we think is real? It did, did, did he lose well, it? Up? Well, Javon Grayson got out. the game. Javon I mean, Grayson was out. Javon Grayson gets in. Was out. Yeah. But, uh, so but I, I also do now. wonder if we're going to see a bit more Javon just with George Hill's situation. Like, but that would still probably be more of a one for one, no? I yeah. mean, it's it's another guy deep in your rotation, though. Assuming yeah, Grayson they, is healthy for those. I think they like, have. If the you depth, if you look at the box score tonight, and you add Grayson, like if you if you can't kind of roll with George Hill. And maybe you can because Drew isn't going to be off the court for all that long in playoff games. You're you're looking at 10 deep. And then where do the cuts come down the line? Some of them could be forced depending on the series again that goes back to the front court. But I I don't feel I don't I don't personally think of a strong feel for where he is going to make those cuts. I think it feels pretty obvious Javon is not going to play. Yeah, in most in most series, I don't think he plays tonight. If if Grayson plays, I, I don't disagree with that. But it's like if we're taking him and George as one, yeah, which I think we probably should, given yep. George's condition too. Like, if you're if you're finding like they were last year, you don't have to not necessarily. Although the books definitely, we all know they benefited because Giannis had to go deeper into games, longer minutes. They all did, and they all got better at it. They all got used to it, where for Giannis in particular, he was gassing before. His conditioning, by the time the finals came around, in spite of terrifying freak injuries, um, was probably about as good as it's ever been in the playoff run and may ever be again. If you're going a little bit deeper, he's getting some more rest. Would that be the case? I don't know. Would you win the games to get there is another question. But I, I do wonder just where the cuts are going to come. Like, is is Pat the only guy that is like guaranteed lock it in every night? Pat's playing out of, out, bench, out of guys. bench guys. Is he? He is. I think Bobby's in that. I think Bobby's pretty. I think Bobby's very. Close I think Rob there. Bobby is very. I don't think we're gonna see. Uh, there, there was some rough Bobby in those games last week defensively. That, oh yeah, that I, I, I could see a repeat of last year. He, he has earned, and I think we talked about it on the podcast last week, he has earned the right and the opportunity based on his play, based on how he filled in for Brooke everything this year. He's earned the benefit of the doubt and the chance to, if it's the Nets, if it's round also, one, it's the Nets, you go out, you let Bobby play. But whether by game two against the Nets, you're still playing Bobby or how much you're playing him, I think is a really different matter altogether. Also, to the point of you know rotation being changed obviously whether it's Wes or you know all the kind of plates that they're spinning right now Bobby had a very big role just for himself going from the starting lineup from mm-hmm. game two to game 70 whatever that was yeah and it showed for the first couple of those games he was not in his groove offensively kind of more of the quieter inefficient games that we've seen him as a buck now the last three games he scored over d- double digits. Not that that means everything, but still plus like, twenty eight tonight. Plus twenty eight tonight, and I, I mean I know Jalen Brown was kind of searching for him. He held up on switches. He that's it's you're gonna have to live with that. I mean we saw with the finals last year too the the pinnacle of <laughs> of his career. Chris Paul early on in that series, you know, made him look like a fool, <laughs> as Chris Paul does with everybody, but. The more you kind of get used to it, the more the right lineups that kind of you know lessen the burden for him to be a defensive playmaker. Or just because we know at any turn he's going to be hunted whenever he's on the on the floor and those types of situations, he's going to have it's going to be hit or miss. But the it kind of evens out as the series goes along, and he gets those reps, especially when he's playing gets or alongside Giannis. Chris drew the, the big three are out there. So I do think that is also very important in this context that like, I am anticipating for that series to, I mean, it could be as soon as the first round where he's not playing as much as he was. I mean, last week he only played like 15 minutes against the nets, but there isn't that PJ Tucker type guy as much as they, you know, 
The Nasus is right year. there. <laughs> right there. I do think, just quickly on, on Bobby on defense, I think some of that is schematic too. They they gave yes. up trying to drop with him for the most part. Yes. Which they just had to do. Um, and I think yeah. they've even tried, I think, to move a bit away from switching and just like hedge more. And I think that's the better idea. And switching is still preferred. Though they did dropping. switch a lot against the Celtics. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think this, this Celtics in particular, but I think they do that more. But I'm glad they stopped dropping. So that's something we identified last playoffs. It just didn't work. Like, and I think that was kind of I think losing Even Brook. Made Bobby, them, Bobby was never in the right position when he dropped. Like he just yeah, no. he has yeah, he has no saying, ability yeah. to read to drop defense. Even yeah, like 100%. the trapping stuff that they'd done throughout this year, just because you know he was their starting center just to do like, something. Yeah, it ta- it's three, it's four on three then. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. like it. I do think this switching ultimately benefits him most. Switching and, and if you can hedge and get back, like they've gotten better at that too. And I think that's one of the silver linings of Brook missing all the time was they kind of had to figure out how do we defend with Bobby and Giannis as the front court, which they were not very good at previous to yeah. that. So you know, I think that that helps him a little too. Actually, Bobby when we played, talk about Bobby too, though, just sorry on that, but it's. Like for me, I should be. Curious. It is. It's the Nets as the boogeyman. Like for for Bobby specifically, it's the idea of. Uh, I think you can live with almost any other team in any other series, and you will find a way from to hang. If he's out there and KD and Kyrie are getting their confidence up and they're really putting up points, like that's just where the books can live with. That that's the fear with the Nets. Like to beat the Nets, if they get anything going, wait, 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 you fear the Nets. Yeah, I'll play them because they'll probably have to, to win a championship. We got a Nets so on the pod for the first time ever. I, I've never said otherwise. I continue, fear the continue. Nets. I don't fear playing the Nets. You gotta play them to win a championship. That's that's not complicated. Ty, I know do we want to get into the stats again? The sure. Mantics. <laughs> Let's dive in. I don't but I will this is my devil's advocate question. Please. Is that a thing? Because this is yeah. the biggest. I For whenever I'm on Twitter and I see like all this, like uh, no one wants to play the Nets. Everybody's ducking the Nets. This isn't the Nets team that was there last year. No, not even close. This is the Nets team that needs Kyrie and KD to go off every single night to and barely then, beat the Knicks. Well, they, KD yeah, I, I, I know. But what, what, are we, what are we saying the Nets were last year, though? Better. Coming in, Very, they were still better. better. Blake Griffin was a, a functional. Of, co- of course, they also had James Harden. But, but what, 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 does it, what does it boil down to when when you play the Nets in the playoffs? Both down to Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant being one of the best players ever. And have you got an answer for that? It's still the rest of it. Still, and it's still not like well, that great with Kyrie when he's there, though. I I, I, I get I, that, yeah. but but there that doesn't mean that. If Kyrie gets to switch onto Bobby Portis ten times a game, that all of a sudden that changes. Like yeah. I, uh, as much as I love, I love nothing more than to make fun of Kyrie. Like I, I can't pretend otherwise. I can't pretend that like we haven't seen for years what he can do. Doesn't mean he will do he'll t- it. He'll take Doesn't honest mean... defensive matchups in the playoffs. Be like, <laughs> well, I'm guarding nice. this guy. <laughs> uh, this is my. I got this. I got that, this. That was a good time. But KD on his own is is one thing that just I said it last year. I'll say it every year from now on. I will never get over that. So the idea of playing him, it's like, yeah, we know what he can do, and if he gets anything, and Kyrie is healthy, I guess. Uh, and you know, we won't go into Kyrie's health and his health choices, but he he's he's healthy. He's healthier Blame. than he was last year than Harden was last year. We know that, like. There is a possibility that they pose a different kind of threat. There is also a possibility that they look like the team they've been over the course of the regular yeah, season, all year. and they're and they're nothing to fear at all. But that's that's the matchup for for Bobby for me, where it's like because it, it's the series where if it gets supercharged, it's really only them and the Suns, I think, where the books could find themselves in a spot where it's like we just cannot keep up with this offense, and that's where they've got to make it. A rock fight like it was last year and that's you've got you, to you don't even have to do it like it was last year because like at, at the end of the day it's going to come down to it's kd versus the bucks right that's what we're, that's what you're getting at adam it's just can kd can you stop kd the bucks were stopping themselves last year 
That's why I had multiple mental breakdowns on this very <laughs> podcast because the Bucks were just taking whatever weapon they could find, aiming it directly at their feet, and then running off the court and then shooting themselves in the foot. That's what they were doing in that series. And they still won because they managed to turn it around late in the series. I'm not worried. You were able to conjure up some of the energy I hadn't the, heard since yeah, that podcast. That, that voice, so it's a little concerning. The voice inflections. That's the what peak it is. level. It was peaking. Bobby Porter's played 30 <laughs> minutes against the Nets in the last mm-hmm. game. was actually what I pulled up. And he didn't shoot the ball well. Really bad defensive first half. And in plus one. Nine points, nine boards. He had that. He had his career night too. The last time I know they the Bucks lost that game, but I, I think I don't know. Honestly, he also reached five thousand career points tonight against the yeah. Celtics. Congrats right. to Bobby. I, I think the rebounding is going to be the most important thing for me for Bobby versus the Nets because I think early in that game he wasn't that Nets game. He wasn't pulling down enough boards, and I think things changed for them on the court with him. In the second half, and I haven't checked the numbers. Maybe he rebounded better in the first half. That's just my recollection. But I think that's almost as important as everything. If you're just going to assume that KD and to a lesser extent Kyrie are just going to shoot over most defenders and there's only so much they can do, which I think is a relatively fair assumption, you got to rebound. And that's how they beat them last year, right? Like they had more possessions. You have to rebound. And I think that's the scariest part of – how do you how do you survive if Brooks not going to play big minutes? Yeah, Brookless minutes. Because yeah, we've seen the difference. Even it doesn't matter oh, what his rebound number is, we've seen the difference on the boxing out. Happy night. Do it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's night and day difference. Like and that's you you think about that against the Nets and you'll see like Bruce Brown coming out from everywhere and grabbing rebounds. Like if Brooks not out there and like that's what it can be. So yeah, at that point is like if Bobby is out there. He's gonna have to play big, like, Remember and he's gonna have to. Early in the year, when he had double-digit rebounds, like ten straight games, and we were so excited. This is why, like, that it needs to happen. Sorry. And that's that's part of no, but that's part of the the dynamic with him and Giannis, which as much success as the books have had with those two guys, as well as he did filling in. His his mindset is not by default to be, I'm gonna you know box out and just basically clear some room for Giannis to get this board and go score because Bobby's mindset is also I want to go down the other end and I want to score like yeah. we know how he plays that's a lot of the value he has for the books is because he can do that but it is something that if he wants to hang in the playoffs and if the books want to get the best version of themselves like if Bobby could just and he's bought into everything they've asked him so far if he could buy into that that changes a lot because you're gonna, yeah, you could still suffer defensively, but they're gonna miss shots. And if you can clean up on all of those, Got to. which at times the books have been able to be that kind of team, win the possession battle, you're gonna win the game. And particularly if it's a, a series like we saw a year ago, and it's the, the margins are, you know, just they go down to the size of someone's shoe. I don't know if you guys know. <laughs> it is kind of funny that both of the lineup changes. I wouldn't say like ongoing decisions. I don't think there's really anyone who thinks Bobby should start over Brook, but that both of the changes were essentially defense versus offense with Brooks being defense and rebounding. However you want to qualify that. But um, I, I see that the desire for more balance, I just think they're playing the, the better two players at this point. I, I'm not with you. I'm not with you on West being better than Grace, but we we just disagree, and that's fine. Yeah. That's, I I don't well, like Wes is playing well, and he's doing his job. He's starting uh, I, to, to really come around back to when he first came back. That that might just be the 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 area of the rotation that is most important for Bud to manage correctly. It's yeah, it's the Grayson Wes Pat part minutes wise, and Lindell. you know some of that has got to be hot hands, but. That's that's got to be managed properly for the books, because I, I think you can include though you said Lindell, but I think you can include Javon and Luca. George Hill as well oh. as just kind of like the the ones twos threes like what combo of them plays who plays who do they play with what pairings work best like that's going that's the hard part like I don't at Serge Ibaka some people I don't I don't I don't know if anyone on here cares he's I, the, I think he's, he's the basketball okay. version of a Somalia I just. <laughs> 
Uh, I just think well, he's I, fine. I think he's like insurance, like right? Like it's insurance, insurance. And he is. That's if if Brooke had any setbacks or if yeah. he was his back was sore, you you need just another guy, and that was pretty good in terms of what they could have got. Or if they were in a the bracket where you know they maybe face the Sixers in the second round. Yeah. I know he didn't play much last week against them, but you know. What one happens in one game doesn't necessarily, you know, equate to it happening again. In that one, so yeah, I, yeah. I still think it's to your point. I it, it is interesting how the lineup changes do revolve around Brooke and Wes, obviously experience, but also you know more consistency. Even as Wes is obviously not, he's had his ups and downs. Yeah, you know, all things considered, but this is. It's it's a big bet on you know this team and where they're at and the shape of the rotation of what they've you know they've obviously had to go through a lot of changes and additions on the periphery or even you know trading Dante for Serge or whatever the case may be and two but, second round picks and, and Javon second, yeah and Javon and DeAndre Bembry you know formerly formerly I um, feel so bad for him. I so are we now saying on Luca Vildoza? And Luca uh, Vildoza. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to get 18 players if they sign someone. And whoever sure. they sign with this open roster spot. Yeah, Ray John Tucker, yeah. maybe. Maybe he tweeted Willie something. Willie Cauley Stein. Say, okay, I, that, that, one, that still, one just makes no sense. It's also, he wouldn't be eligible, right? I don't know when he got waived. Yeah, he would be because he got waived a long time ago. Yeah. He barely played. I did he? Did he get waived to, for someone to get playoff eligible? He got waived for DeAndre, right? Yeah. So which I means that cool. DeAndre Jordan is playoff eligible, which means Willie Colley Stein is playoff eligible. I also don't believe it. It's just oh. a random rumor. Yeah, they, oh, waived him in, they waived him in January. Yeah. So he's oh. super, super eligible. Yeah, I don't believe it because it's like one, why? Two, surge. Take surge three, why again? Yeah. It's another it, like if if the books do something now with uh, the the open roster spot they have again. It's it's a guard, it's a wing, it's a forward. I think the one or thing Mama. it's not is a, is a big. Yeah, or Mama. Yeah, or just conver- for converting Mama. Just for I don't. I, I honestly, at this point, I don't even know if they do that because if you if you're going to do something, they might just take a flyer and yeah, that gives you an extra guy in the roster where you can't you can't use another two way. So you might free well agency. Have, yeah. You might as well all have Mommy write it out on that and just be like, oh, well, you know, we'll look after you in the summer. Or maybe they won't. Who knows? Uh, I honestly, I have no read on how the books feel. You have to worry about Jordan about Morris for agency. I'm really worried. I forgot he was on the roster until right now. I sleep thinking about Jordan Morris for agency. He, did, you get, did you guys remember he's on the team? I didn't. Yeah, I did. He's, I was looking. Uh, he's played like over a thousand minutes this year. Ridiculous. And they've all came, they all came he, the first he half got of his, the season. He got his chance. First half of the season, yeah. he was getting the, the chance that I think we all would agree he deserved based on yeah. some flashes he's shown, based on his Olympic play. The books did at least kind of decide, okay, well, let's have a bit of a look at him. And then also, I mean, he said multiple early season assignments that are heard too. Like they've, they've had him play games within the system at a pretty significant rate this year. And yeah, I think minds will very much be made up. Yeah. Um, have fun in Houston. I'm trying to think of which one would make. Is there a new tanking team? Portland. No, they're trying to be good now. Thunder. They're, oh, yeah, the Thunder. Thunder. Team. They're full already. They have 14 more draft picks to make. They got to make That's room true. for Vit on the roster and JRE and everyone else. And um, Let's quickly talk about standings. I mean, basically, this whole pod turned into a look at the rotations. It's a, it's a state of the state of the Bucks. State state of the Bucks. We it's needed to. We, we said it True was nuts. like a boring, boring game tonight because oh, the Bucks are just going to win again, like they do. Oh, probably going to win our championship. So we had to talk about the important stuff, which is Bobby Portis and less matches. Actually, yeah, pretty much. I trust everyone else. Um, the standings. So Milwaukee beating Boston puts the Bucks back into. Second place in the Eastern Conference, where a lot of doom and gloom are on this seed right now because of the aforementioned Nets. I just want to say quickly before we get into the Bucks in the top half seeding, it's not a given the Nets finish eligible for yes. seventh. Um, yep. they, the, the play in, those four teams, are very much like the top five. The Bulls are just sitting there like, yeah, we're going to lose in the first round no matter what. This sucks. Um, <laughs> the, nothing nothing important will happen there. But the first five, are there's a lot of flux. I mean, actually one is set, two through two through five, and then seven through ten. 
So the Nets are in eighth, one game back of Cleveland, same record as Atlanta, one game ahead of Charlotte. Charlotte has the tiebreaker. Don't remember who does with the Cavs. I think they still play, actually. They do. Yes, they play tomorrow. That's the Cavs. Um, so, like, there's a lot of tiebreaker stuff and just a lot of record stuff. I mean, you would probably expect the Nets to beat the Cavs at home and the Pacers at home. But, I mean, this Nets team, is it a certainty? Certainty? Absolutely not. So depending on how... Cavs have a lot to play for. Cavs have everything to play for. They just stink now because they ran out of players. But um, the Hawks play the Heat and the Rockets. The Heat have already shut down P.J. Tucker. They have nothing to play for anymore. So if the Hawks go 2-0 and and the Nets lose a game, it's totally possible that the Nets fall out of 7-8, which means they could only play the Heat, which would be delicious. Um, and then I forget the Hornets play the Bulls and the Wizards. So a lot to happen there still. It's not a certainty. All this to say, if the Bucks finish two, they do draw the Nets. They probably do. But and and of course, also, go ahead. That kind of opens the door to being like they could pull their own. Hey, who would we rather play, the Bucks or the Heat? I mean, they could. And they don't have PJ Tucker, and that's I, a that's a big loss. I don't think they'll for ever a do week. That. For a week, yeah, I think he'll we, play we, again. He, but to the he, it's a calf strain. And He's he been missed, really bad since the break. He missed there. ten games last year when the Bucks got him for the same exact injury diagnosis. Uh, again, I'll put it. I'll put it this way: If you were playing them in the first round, you saw him on the court. You may not be too disappointed in that. Like if he's just if he's just back. He's going to be playing true, and he may not be the same at all. And yeah. it's it's not even just with the books. Even going back to like the last couple of years with the Rockets, when he'd pick up injuries like that, they had they had effects on his game. Yeah, like yeah. even I, I think we forget, and we forgot even last year, like how old PJ Tucker is. Like, and he's he's really at the kind of the tail end of his career. It's all credit to him that he's, he's NBA being champion as, PJ Tucker. Yes. Yeah, being as uh, productive, as effective now um, as he is. But, yeah, that's that's a big deal. I will say to that, Jordan, I don't think you can play for standings when you're where the Nets are just because either way you do it, either if you're in the 7-8 punting it to try and get the 8 or trying to go down to the 9-10, you're putting yourself one loss away from not making the playoffs. And I don't even think the Nets would be arrogant enough to purposefully do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put anything past them. I kind of am in that camp because I don't I don't know. They are this performance. They could do anything team. at they this point. They could intentionally they not anything. they could intentionally not make the playoffs just for vibes. That's a Who big, knows at this KD point? KD wouldn't Kyrie I could see totally like people don't deserve to watch me in the playoffs. Boycott the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, people don't deserve to watch me in the playoffs. KD's gonna be like, yeah, man. Kind of like the Packers right. did. Boycott the playoffs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so two through five. Um well, we got to dumb it down a lot. We're supposed to be a short pod, and we—I'm we, I mean, super happy. It was a great, great episode. But um, they stay in two no matter what. The Bucks, if they win their next two games, second half of a back-to-back against Detroit seems like Bud already kind of hint, hint, wink, wink that they're not going to play anyone. What was the exact quote? We're going to see where guys are at. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to play anyone. Um, and then Cleveland day game on Sunday uh, again. Like you mentioned, Adam, the Cavs have a ton to play for still. Um, so not. Easy games necessarily, depending on who the Bucks have for both of them. But if you win both, you're always the two seed no matter what. And now there's a million other scenarios, thanks to Matt Moore at HP Basketball for documenting them all as usual. But if you go, if the Bucks go one and one, and the Celtics lose, is it against or at the Grizzlies? Do we know? I know they uh, play the, the Grizzlies. Grizzlies in Memphis. Uh, I believe it's in Memphis. The Grizzlies have now, nothing but... to play for. It's worth noting. They buzz saw anyone, no matter who's on the court. <laughs> As the Bucks saw, um, but if the Celtics lose, the Bucks just need to win one, and they're the two seed. If the Bucks win zero, they could slide down all the way to three, depending on what happens with Boston and, of course, with Philly, um, because the Bucks are they have one less loss, so they're half game ahead of Boston, and they're one full game ahead of Philly. So with two games to play for Milwaukee and Philly. They, they could get jumped, theoretically, if the Bucks don't win again. So, still, again, they're not locked into two. The Nets are not locked into seven. There's a lot of movement. I'd probably think, though, the most likely outcome is is Bucks at two, but it's far from a sure thing. It's at Grizzlies, confirmed. And I wonder how many Celtics will play in that game. I mean, if you're talking about, you know, pulling, three pulling days rest. something. Two? What did you say, Jordan? Three days rest. 
two. It's they it's or two days rest. They don't own the tiebreaker over the Sixers, do they? Is that what they you said? do. Sixers don't do. have any tiebreaker between Celtics or Bucks. I mean, nice. uh, if you're if you're the Celtics, even there's kind of there's multiple ways of looking at it too. If they did want to fall back, I, I don't like stay. even I'm I'm thinking a, a two for the books. Even if we take opponent out of it, I think I think go get two because oh yeah, I, you're gonna have home court in the conference finals. Yeah, I like that. I, I believe it. I I really do. I think you're giving yourself a, a very, very good chance of how you call home court the conference finals. So two is kind of one, is what I'm saying. You know, I I think um, for Boston they probably thanks sit- Jordan. Jordan winked for people <laughs> listening on the podcast. They probably <laughs> sit because they get to see what happens with Philly, right? So I think if Philly loses yeah. again, they probably don't play anyone at Memphis because they, they also see what Philly. happens with the Bucks too. Does that well? They would all. I think they'd always want to lose if if they're cowards. If Philly loses before then, <laughs> which we we should assume they are cowards because of the Celtics. Because which of these teams cowards. are not cowards? Is the question. The only non-coward team is the Bucks. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I guess the Heat. I don't know. Uh, the Heat aren't cowards, but no. that's just the Heat are, you know, the heat are maybe different. They, maybe they should have been. The Hawks maybe they'll wish cowards. they were cowards. The Hawks. Hawks? Aren't cowards. They're just not good. They, yeah, they're bravely <laughs> sitting at nine. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if the Hawks you know get in that, also, I'll, if the Hawks get in the Heat yeah. side of the bracket, we could have a the, conference the, finals the, match the up, Knicks, a rematch. The Knicks have. aren't cowards. The Knicks aren't cowards. What? They're they're brave enough to miss the playoffs. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Still better than the Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, because the Lakers could still lose. Lakers players. cowards. I yeah. mean, the other thing is, you could have home court if you got in the two tree matchup. And that way, you could get to play the Bulls in the first round, and that sounds like a lot of fun. If you that does sound like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah so finishing three is for sure. You'll, you'll still have home court in the conference finals, you know. <laughs> um, and you get to play the Bulls in the first round. I mean, you'll probably have home court in the conference semifinals. I think it's at least a shot. Mm. Ooh, spicy. Is that spicy? Nets over Celtics? I guess a little bit. Without yeah. Time Lord early in the series? I don't know. I, no, I don't think it's it's spicy, but that's like that's a good it's competitive not, series that can go Kelsey either way. Yeah, yeah, it's like spicy. if the Nets beat the, the Celtics, I am not remotely surprised, but the Celtics could beat them. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't think it's a... It's a I, I don't think either of those teams are at the heat. You know who's not going to be punting games? Is Philly. Who must just be terrified at the prospect of this four or five with Toronto? Oh my God, that which, is gonna that is so juicy. Which they could potentially not have home court in it. Toronto, they, they can sense the batteries raining down already. If they if the, if this flips, it's even funnier. But if Philly has to play Toronto, no Tybal, the way Toronto guards Embiid, the way James Harden plays when games matter. Like they've got to be petrified of that first round series. Didn't they, go well the last time they played against Toronto in the playoffs, famously. Did not. I did wonder, not go well tonight. Do you think? No. And they would never say either. Are the Sixers more afraid of Toronto than Brooklyn? Yeah. I I think that would really reflect on the Simmons. Sixers as a non-contender if they're more worried about the Raptors than they're the Nets, which. Maybe, maybe reflective of the situation, but if that's how you're approaching the playoffs, you know, like Raptors are a tricky matchup for us, you know, who'd rather the Nets are, uh, you're just, you're playing a different game, but you're not going to win anything. It's like, forget about it. Boston's got to be a little afraid of that, that matchup as well. Um, with some questionable vast <laughs> steps. A lot that's of kinda, fear going around. A lot of fear lately. It's yeah. kind of nice to be the plucky, you know, five seed who no one wants to play. Doesn't usually end ultimately the best, but it's a fun, it's a fun mindset. Hey, it's look, fun the, for when you're the team like in the Bucks standing. Oh yeah, that's fun too. Yeah, like last year, not not five seed, not quite, but that worked out. You know, yeah, there it, there, is, there is a path to that, and I'm sure there will be conversations along those lines too when teams are trying to work this out. Of being like, eh, books aren't one seed, books aren't two seed last year. Does it matter? 
Like if we believe we're the best, well, we'll just go and we'll win those. Who was games. the who was the plucky low? Oh, it was the Heat last year? They were yeah. the plucky low seed. That was a team no one wanted to play for sure. But it ended up actually being the Hawks. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, books Hawks uh, conference finals last year based on the standings, like and the seeding going into it is. Is that one of the yeah, bigger yeah. conference finals upsets? That does not happen very often. Yeah, I can't imagine. So it's, many got, it's gotta gotta be right up there. There's not many where there's not a one or a two. That's gotta be. It's a lot of effort to go look. Right? Uh, well, you... Cavaliers over the Celtics in LeBron's last oh, year. Oh, right. Well, no, the Celtics yeah. were pretty high, weren't they? Celtics are. They were the seed. first, but the Cavaliers were like the fourth seed. Well, yeah, yeah, but we're, we're saying a conference finals with neither both one teams. or two. Um, it's got to be what was that? Was that a Rockets team that made the finals? Is like a six seed, like the eighties? Yeah, maybe I it's that. that was... I feel was there not a recent enough Western Conference case of this? I can't think of it in the East though. It's like, oh, was it last year in the West? What were the Suns? They were one. Were like the oh, two they were seed. one. Oh, they were, I, think I think they were two. Oh yeah, because Jazz, Jazz were one. one. Jazz were one. Yeah, yeah. Both <laughs> one seeds went down in the second round. Yeah, I just remember them as. They they weren't favored against the Lakers, but that's looks pretty silly now. We can look this up another time. Um, is there any <laughs> any other Bucks uh, standings or rotation or whatever uh, stuff we should talk about here? Uh, here's a here's a fun fun stat. Uh, Ooh, like so this. the Milwaukee Bucks they got to 50 wins this season. Uh, it is the fourth consecutive season that they've had a 50 win pace, so above 600 winning percentage. The last Chasing down. Of- Sorry, go on. Last time franchise did that was seven years in a row from 1980 to 1987. I was going to say we're, about this. We're, we're chasing down the, the Nelly books in multiple ways. Like Now that one even, that's extending U.S. with the Central Division, which was one thing. If they could match the... That might be even more unthinkable to me like a few years back than the books winning a championship would be the prospect of a book team that could match that run of Nelly's teams or it's like... They're just an automatic 50 win team <laughs> yeah. for for the best part of a decade. It was seven straight, but then they had a 49 win season. It was season close when there. I looked it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, I, they did. Did they get back over once more later in it? But that, that was unthinkable as just like absolute consistent excellence. And yeah, I mean, I, I could see it. That's my, that's my history set. That's all I got. Was good, Ron. Yes, uh, any any opportunity to talk about the Nelly Bucks? Is they, they almost got back. It was uh, in eighty eight, eighty nine. They won forty nine. Forty nine again, right? And then mm-hmm. forty eight two years after that. But now we're into nineteen ninety one. When I was looking it up, I was like, "In the danger wow. zone." Well, the, they hadn't even done it consecutively, like back to back, until like since that eighty oh, yeah, eighty seven no, rush. Yeah. I mean, were, oh yeah, they had like two fifty. They hadn't won, they hadn't won fifty over multiple seasons for some some parts they went of that from stretch. Having a twelve year playoff series victory drought to an eighteen year playoff series victory drought, which sounds, I mean, Kings fans are probably looking at me like, why rub it in? They haven't made the playoffs yeah. since two thousand six. Yeah, at least the Bucks were making the playoffs, even if it wasn't for long. That's the that's so depressing. <laughs> They can't make the playoffs. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about the Kings. The Kings. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is 16 years of not making the playoffs. What's about a time that would have been the NBA saying you have to move your franchise? In you fairness, can't. they yeah. New they arena did. is, is yeah. a good is yeah, good that true. they've they got did? that new arena. The, what? Oh, they what? They very nearly moved the Kings. Yeah, yeah, there's a documentary about it, and now since the Kevin Johnson stuff, it's not really. They kind of pursued yeah. it. They they didn't. They didn't I don't release think they it, right. They but they yeah. had the they had the viewing party, didn't they? Yes, they did. Super yeah. awkward situation, but yeah, um, really hard conference. Like the Bucks might have gone that far, yeah. Like and not even going if they played in the West for some. If the well, West, they, if the East was like the West was for this Kings run. Same with the Timberwolves too, right? That was like fourteen years before that Butler year. Yeah, I think then, so. Yeah, that's a gauntlet. And now they're going to make it again this year. Anthony Edwards at forty nine points tonight. Like ridiculous. Young players are good. Bucks should uh, run off another chip real quick. That's the first <laughs> I've ever heard. And Edwards called Tony. Tony Edwards? Tony? Yeah. 
Wait, yeah. do you call him Tony? You just you just said Tony. Yeah. You can call him if you want. I wonder <laughs> what if how that's, what if that's like an what if that's like an Andrew don't call me Andy McCutcheon situation? Oh, it might be. Or uh, who is was it McCarthy? Call me coach. No, no, that's just, no, that's Jason no. Garrett. Oh, Garrett. Yeah, I, get yeah, my, yeah. I get my failure Cowboys coaches confused. My bad. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. That's a pet peeve of mine. Coach culture. Coach. Coach culture. <laughs> I, I try to ask that question whenever we talk to a coach. That's my binge the Bucks, but but with the TV show Coach, the Craig <laughs> Nelson one. Coach culture. And then just watch every episode of <laughs> Rohan, spool the outro. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for listening to this episode of the Eurostep Podcast Network Basketball Edition. Is that is that what we're going with? No, yeah. no. I, I, no, I, I, I think people get what it is. Yeah, yeah. People get what it is. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking basketball, Eurostep Podcast Network. It's what we just did. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed on your podcast platform of choice. Leave a five-star rating on Apple, on Spotify, wherever you can. Write a review. Make sure you're subscribed to the Substack, gspn.substack.com. Uh, Ron, sure if, if, they've, if they've already, I do this to you all the time, I'm sorry. If they've already given a five-star rating and review to the Eurostep Podcast Network, and they're like, oh, what can I do? I've done it already. You can go and you can leave a five-star rating and review for cruising for a bruising. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll read it out on the show. Yeah. If, if that's your thing. If you want to get a review read right out again. There we go. We got a solution for you. Sorry, Ron. Continue. We do have a we have a Spotify review on our form. By Ooh, the way. perfect. Ooh. Um, we've gotten a couple actually, so we have some to work doing it. We have, we can see the Apple ones. We need people to send us the Spotify. So the link is in the uh, Eurostep Podcast Network link tree. It's in my bio. I think it's in everyone's bios by now, um, but certainly in mine, Rohan's, um, and and others. But this is from um, Cowboy of Space on Twitter. Tanner, oh, shout out Tanner. Mm-hmm. Shout um, out. He writes, been listening to both shows for a long time. Always appreciate how lighthearted and fun the experience as a listener is. Also want to give a shout out to the Win in Six show for first getting me hooked on Bucks podcast back in the 2017 Raptors playoff series. Oh, nice review, cow. Tanner. And it's five stars on Spotify. So I was, I was about to say, Tanner's, Tanner's a true been a OG. Long time. I didn't realize yeah, that, yeah. that long. Also, realize, makes you realize we've been doing that. <laughs> Jordan, we've been, doing, we've been doing a long time. Yeah, when you guys said on your recent episode that you've been doing this for six years, I was like, wait a second, what? Going yeah, we're, seven. Like, we're, we're like, well, we're, no, we're no, go on. Oh, yeah, it is seven. It's seven in like three months. I was going to say, you yeah. had to start in 15 because mine started in 15. And yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was the, the, the Rashad draft. Vaughn draft night. That's Shoddy. our first podcast. And amazingly, we have done almost, as Jordan pointed out on the last, our next work. episode, we'll have a uh, we'll win a six for every day of the year. <laughs> Can you believe we're circling back to Stan Van Gundy with the Rashad Vaughn reference? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The next big Rashad thing. Rashad Vaughn. I hope, I, hope, uh, <laughs> I hope cooking with Shad's still going on. Where with Schwad? With Schwad. <laughs> <laughs> cooking with Schwad. <laughs> like the Schwab. Stump the Schwad. Charles Schwad. I'm sorry, Rohan. You were you were actually doing the outro. I was, but it's uh, what can you expect when it's us in a call yeah. together? Uh, thank you guys for listening. We do appreciate it a lot. Subscribe to everything I said. Pod random, and we will talk to you next time.